Hello everyone, thank you for your patience. The webinar will start in a couple of seconds. I want to start by welcoming you to our webinar hands-on flat surface testing with MESO. The following will be our agenda. I'm going to start by introducing the speakers, then a brief presentation of Imagine Optic and its activities. Then we're going to talk about MESO, its applications and the advantages it brings to the industry. And after that, we have the hands-on part where you can see MESO in live demo. We're going to send you a poll of four questions later on. Thank you for answering it. And at the end, we'll be open to answer any of your questions. Starting by the speakers, Xavier, co-founder and CSO, who's responsible for each and every innovation at Imagine Optic. Rafael, scientific coordinator and metrology solution manager, who has a large trajectory in business and product development. Diego, the application engineer, who by now is a reference when it comes to characterizing customer samples with Meso, and myself as digital marketing manager, trying to spread the shift towards digital marketing at Imagine Optic. Imagine Optic was founded in 1996. I think by now almost all of you have heard of us. We are developing and manufacturing wavefront sensors, metrology solutions, and adaptive optic systems. We are now around 55 employees with uh, last year revenues were around 6.5 million euros. We have more than 35 patents granted, more than 2,000 sensors sold worldwide, more than 200 adaptive optic systems with Miao, the Pombo mirrors, core ophthalmology and microscopy, and 70 adaptive optics systems with ILAO and the ILAO star deformable mirrors for high power lasers in more than 10 countries around the world. This is a quick overview of our clients, main clients uh, worldwide. And this is a brief uh, overview of uh, the products of Imagine Optic. As you can see, the wavefront sensors, the metrology systems, the formal mirrors and adaptive optic solutions. We provide also engineering and uh, support services for our clients. Today, we're going to discuss mainly metrology systems. Uh, Imagine Optic has two types of metrology systems. One's designed for the labs and R&D, and the new one, which is MESO, designed for industry and production to be at the bottom of, of the production line. So what is MESO? A new metrology solution for easy at wavelength testing of flat surfaces in any environment. And by any environment, we mean rough and complex environment, in particular production and manufacturing environments. What it's used for, MESO allows you to control your process in situ. Close to the production line, it is well suited for the characterization of plane parallel optics. It provides you with the same kind of information as a standard FISO interferometer. Transmitted wavefront and surface shape measured in reflection. And on the right side, you can see the typical samples you can test with MESO. I'm going to give the word to my colleague, Raf. Thank you, Raf. Uh, you can have a, a quick, uh, quick view uh, to the main uh, features of uh, MESO and what makes it different. First of all, um, MESO is insensitive to vibration thanks to the technology embedded. Um, then MESO allows you to characterize your sample at uh, specific wavelengths and not only at uh, 635 uh, nanometers, the, the HINI um, wavelengths. Also, uh, it embeds an automated uh, optical zoom so that you can uh, characterize or, or at least adapt the testing diameter from uh, 1.5 inches up to 6 inches without any loss of um, resolution and, uh, and a special something. And last point, um, we are not limited um, uh, by uh, the reflections that can come back from the back surface of uh, samples such as um, plane parallel samples where uh, the fact that the two uh, surfaces are parallel 
um, makes you impossible to filter the uh, indiscriminate signal from the front and the back uh, surface. So if we go a little bit more in the detail of uh, these uh, features in the next uh, slide, uh, the first one is that uh, the technology, and technology is based on a, a standard Shakartman implementation, uh, makes that uh, acquisition very fast, an acquisition lasts 30 microseconds, so we freeze, let's say, the vibration or uh, atmospheric turbulences, and we are not sensitive uh, to them, uh, such as uh, an implementation like a piezo interferometer where you, you need to apply different um, measurements uh, moving uh, mechanically um, uh, the reference uh, surface, for example. Uh, and that makes the implementation pretty much easy. We don't need uh, an optical table, as you can or you will see uh, today in the hands on part. So it makes it easy to take a meso outside the optical lab. Um, then, um, uh, in the next slide, you will see uh, as a feature that um, we are not, uh, we, we don't need to measure um, using coherent light or, or laser-based uh, sources, which gives us a lot of flexibility to uh, choose specific wavelengths within the sensitivity of the, um, of the sensor, so from 400 to uh, one micron. Uh, and then you can test at the specific design wavelengths or, or, or at the specific wavelengths where you will use the sample, and not, not only at uh, any uh, wavelengths which is uh, very useful, for example, in the case of the characterization of uh, filters or dichroics. Then in the next uh, slide, um, uh, 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 Imagine Optique uh, has been working uh, during the last two years on the development of a new procedure that we patented that allows you uh, uh, to take into account uh, signal coming from uh, the first surface and the uh, back surface of a uh, PAL uh, sample, making the instrument very convenient for the characterization of uh, plane parallel optics um, uh, without uh, uh, the need of a complex or cost of, um, or expensive uh, add-ons. Okay, uh, and again, we will uh, showcase it. Yes, and, and today uh, we are going we are we are going to see uh, three different procedures. So the first one is uh, let's say the easiest one, and is uh, the the procedure in order to measure uh, a sample in transmission. So as you can see, uh, the, the measurement will be done thanks to a reference mirror, and we will have the measurement in double pass into the sample. So um, to, uh, to show this procedure, we will uh, uh, measure a, a crystal, one uh, 30, 35 millimeter uh, crystal, and uh, that is uh, transparent and visible. So we are going to uh, make the measurement at 635 nanometers. The second, um, the second procedure. Uh, is about a mirror and uh, this one is um, much more uh, challenging. What we want to do here is to measure uh, a mirror, a, a dielectric mirror, uh, in, a, in, a, in a way in order to uh, get both surfaces. So one uh, surface is, uh, um, is coated with a dielectric uh, coating that is 100% um, uh, reflective around 800 nanometers. So in order to do that, we are going to use uh, 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 wavelengths where uh, the um, um, mirror is uh, transparent, and we will do uh, the, the whole, uh, the whole uh, uh, procedure in order to get both Surface. And at the end, in order to uh, uh, prove what we say, we will do the measurement of the reflection of this mirror at 780 nanometer, where the coated 
uh, surface is 100% reflecting. And with these three uh, measurements, we will uh, show you that uh, we can do uh, uh, for sure uh, transmission measurement, uh, reflection measurement, and what we call POP, uh, a plane optics procedure, uh, um, in order to get both surfaces of a plane uh, optics. So, uh, Let's see the system and just a, 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 a flat word. So as you can see, if we switch the camera, we are going to work on a table, a simple table. So without any uh, uh, vibration evaluation. So in a really rough um, uh, environment. So I will let uh, Diego to show you the measurement of let, let's begin with, uh, with uh, uh, the transmission procedure, so with the crystal that is transparent at 635 nanometer. Thank you, Xavier. Um, hello, everyone. First of all, uh, we can describe a little bit the setup. So uh, in the first type, you have MESO, which is the metrology system. And in front of it, you have the reference mirror which is used to measure the optical aberration intrinsic to the metrology system. Uh, we are working in a double pass configuration. And uh, now, if everything is okay, we're going to share the, the software also. So here is Racer. So the software, uh, which is the, associated with Metal. Uh, first, you select the type of procedure you want to run. So here is it is a transmitted wavefront measurement. So the procedure is named TW. Here, uh, we're going to perform the calibration because it's the first or the three of the three measurements we're going to run. The wavelength, uh, we're going to measure uh, at uh, 635 nanometers. And for the diameter, uh, there is five uh, test diameter uh, available with MESO. Here, it is the smaller one, which is 1.5 inches. Uh, then on top left corner of the software, you launch the procedure. First step, you align your reference mirror. Thank you, Xavier. Uh, so we are not going to, to lie. Uh, it's already aligned to, to, to gain some time. Then you click uh, on the next button and you go to the second step. So we call that the fine alignment because um, uh, we have some signal on the waveform sensor and now we can measure the tilt values in order to, to reach the fine alignment. When that is done, the, the circle, which is blue at the beginning, we're gonna see maybe later the blue color, but now it's green because we align. You click. You click a second time on the next button, and you go to the last step of the procedure. So thank you, Xavier. You placed your sample on the test between the mirror and meso without any alignment, and you click on the next button. That's the last one, I promise. Okay, so in a few seconds, your reference measurement is available. So here we can see some uh, uh diffraction on the edges so we're going to use the zernic reconstruction which is well suited for circular samples and thanks to that wait just a few moments we can see a waveform which is much more circular uh here we can see on the uh, left bottom of the screen that we are removing the curvature and now, if we add the curvature to the measurement, so I didn't say it, but the wavefront is the main uh, window. On the top right corner, you have also uh, a display in fringes because uh, metrology is very linked to interferometry uh, application. So now you have you have the wavefront with also the curvature. We can see at the center of the sample. Uh, a strong defect 
in the growth of the crystal. And that we have also the model coefficient. And uh, now we're going to pass to the second measurement. Yes. Let's go. So now the small one is OK. We are going to show you the patented method, which is called POP. Uh, so you select the procedure, parallel object. The wavelength, as uh, Xavier explained, is 35 nanometers. Uh, because uh, if it goes to another wavelength, for example, in the infrared, there is this dielectric coating that make this uh, thin plane optics a mirror. So uh, now we select the test diameter, which is a six inches optic. So select the uh, relevant zoom. Now we need some information in order to to, to process pop. Uh, first is the refractive index of the material. Here it's glass, so 1.5. The transmission is one, no absorption, or very, very few absorption. And uh, about the coefficient, we are okay. 16% uh, on the front surface, which is coated, and 4%, classical one, on the back one, which is uh, gla uncoated glass. Then you can launch your measurement. As before, we have a reference uh, measurement in order to, to get the optical aberration intrinsic to, to meso and the setup. Thank you, Xavier, for your help. As promised, you can see the blue circle and where we, we are aligned, it became green. We try to, to get very guided procedure in order to simplify the process. Second step, after the calibration, you can uh, cover your mirror and place the sample. So we're going to align it uh, in double pass configuration. So first rough alignment, you can see on the moment and on the camera, but there is a, a screen on meso and a pinhole in order to collimate it quite quickly, as Xavier told us. Now, file alignment. So I, uh, I put the window on the right in order to see the camera signal, but to be sure that we are measuring what we want. But you can see this red point. And as before, you have to put it in the circle. When we are in a green circle, we know that we are perfectly aligned. So we're not far off, and it's done. You push the next button, and the third and last step of this procedure is a transmitted measurement. Okay, now um, the results are available. Uh, at the bottom of your screen, left bottom, you can select which surface you want to display the front surface, the back surface, or the transmitted waveform. So here we do have the, the, the first surface, and as you can see, um, we do have a lot of curvature, more than uh, uh, 11. Uh, microns so a lot of fringes is because uh, this mirror is uh, uh, quite thin uh, the dimer is 150 millimeters but the thickness is about one millimeter so it's really difficult to have something very flat uh, when you mount it in, into, a, into a mount so we, we do have this uh, large amount of uh, focus but we can filter it and see the residual aberration that is about 160 uh, uh, nanometers for uh, surface A. So we can see that it's quite uh, uh, pure uh, astigmatism. But if we now look at the surface B, we do have uh, for sure a lot of uh, curvature too, uh, same sign as the, the, the the previous uh, 
uh, surface A. It's because it's uh, completely parallel. Um, but when we uh, subtract uh, the focus on this surface, like this, we can see that we do have uh, 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 also an astigmatism, but not exactly the same uh, direction as the, the for surface A. And uh, when we subtract um, ast uh, the, the astigmatism, uh, we can see uh, some, uh, uh, let's say, high frequency or middle frequency uh, aberration that are completely different from a surface A. That is this one. Okay, so, and for sure, uh, we, as we are measuring it, we, we, we can add the transmitted uh, wavefront of, uh, of this, um, of this uh, sample. So we have just measured here uh, uh, the two surfaces of a thin large dimer, thin uh, uh, parallelotics. And uh, we, we, we can see that we get uh, surface A, uh, the front surface, the back surface, and the transmitted uh, so in order to show you that uh, everything is fine, we are going to mirror the front surface at another wavelength at uh, 785. Uh, uh, so you configure the software, select the procedure as before, wavelength, same diameter, you can remove this removal, if we can say that, and we are ready to launch the procedure. So as before, uh, without calibration, we have to align the mirror, which is already aligned. And we can mirror. So here is the result now. So as you can see here, we, we do have uh, uh, quite uh, 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 exactly the same uh, weapon as before. So we, we do have this uh, uh, close to 11 uh, microns of, uh, of uh, curvature. And if we remove this uh, curvature by software, we do have the reconstruction of uh, the uh, Surface, and here we do find the same 160 nanometers of astigmatism. If you remember, we get this 160 nanometers of astigmatism with the previous uh, uh, measurement for uh, the both surfaces. RMS. RMS, yes. And if we uh, subtract uh, the astigmatism, we get the same shape. Of, uh, of uh, aberration we get on this um, uh, so here is uh, without uh, astigmatism at zero degree and without astigmatism at surface. So we, we, we can find uh, this same uh, uh, shape of aberration we get before. But now we are measuring the reflection because this is a mirror at yes. this wavelength. It, with the dielectric coating, uh, this, this uh, optics is a perfect 100% reflective uh, mirror at 785 nanometer. It was designed to be like this. So we have one question in the audience, which is what is the, the resolution of uh, MESO? Well, so uh, MESO is uh, embedding um, our lift uh, sensors, lift wavefront sensors. So lift wavefront sensors uh, are a new technology uh, developed and commercialized a couple of years back uh, by uh, Imagine Optic. It is based on the same architecture as a wavefront sensor meaning a, a lens set of uh, an array of micro lenses in front of um, a camera. But the reconstruction 
of the phase is completely different than a standard Chakatman weapon sensor. Uh, for now, I have a, a slide maybe uh, on the support. Um, Yeah, so this, this uh, leap reconstruction allows us to multiply by a factor uh, like 16 times the resolution of standard Shackhartman weapon sensor, allowing us to reach uh, 680 points per uh, 500 points. Okay, so we are already talking about a high, uh, high resolution. And this is because we are reconstruct um, more modes per micro lenses than a standard wavefront uh, Shackhartman sensor. And this is a technology embedded by, uh, by Meso. We have a second question. And uh, if there are any plans for uh, SWIR uh, Meso? Oh, yeah. So uh, we are starting the commercialization of uh, Meso for the visible range, uh, meaning uh, this is a, a standard uh, CMOS sensor visible from uh, 400 nanometers up to one micron. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the first instrument of the family commercialized uh, right, right now. And uh, by the end of the year, we will commercialize um, a second uh, instrument for the infrared and, and in particular for the SWIR uh, web lenses. It will be based uh, on our uh, SWIR uh, lift wavefront sensor. Uh, a third question uh, was on how to avoid getting double reflections from both sides of optical window. Okay, yeah, I will answer. Sure. Sure. Uh, so, in fact, um, as we are working with a wavefront sensor, um, we can measure. Uh, two wavefront at the same time. We are not measuring, we are not able to distinguish which, which one is which one, but we are able to measure the average of these two wavefronts. So we get two wavefronts from one from the, the, the front, front uh, surface, a second from the back surface. And uh, at this step, uh, the the wavefront sensor is measuring uh, the average of, of the of the two wavefronts, and thanks to a second measurement that is a transmit transmitted wavefront through the sample, we do have let's say two equations. We uh, we, we we do have we want to find two parameters that is the shape of uh, front surface and back surface, and with two equations, two parameters. Uh, mathematically, we can we we, we can find and, and calculate the solution. Another question about uh, if there's a way to get curvature in two 90 degrees direction, so as to be able to measure non-plane optics with a little bit of tweaking in the setup. I repeat it: Is there a yeah. way to get curvature in two 90 degrees directions? To be able to measure non-plane optics. So, so two curvature with a different angle. It means measuring astigmatism. I understand. So, I suppose uh, yes, this is the case. Um, uh, Meso instrument is designed uh, with a collimated output, so so it's more targeted for uh, flat surfaces in uh, reflection. Um, and in the, for the transmission measurement uh, for optics with no um, with no uh, power, power. Um, but but uh, no problem for measuring uh, wavefronts with um, with different curvature in two different uh, axes. I hope that answers the question. And one last question: uh, What is the smallest deformation measurable with Meso? along with the accuracy and the repeatability. Yeah. The smallest deformation measurable. Yeah. Um, so the, the accuracy of the instrument is the same than the uh, wavefront uh, embedded in, in the instrument. So it's a lambda over 100 
uh, in the very past. Yeah. Yeah. Lambda yeah. over 100 root mean square in simple pass. The instrument is working in double pass, so it, it allows us to reach uh, lambda over 200. Um, and also importantly uh, is to remember that uh, aberrations that may come from uh, the, the illumination um, uh, pass or, or the double pass through the instrument are taken into account because we are taking this reference whenever you want uh, with, a, with a flat. So and at the end of the day, yeah. uh, the, uh, the, the optical quality of the measurement is given and li often limited by the quality of the reference mirror. Exactly. So, uh, so it's up to the money you put in, your, in the flat. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> As you can see in the bottom of uh, the go to webinar platform, there's a couple of handouts you can you can find, uh, and there is also. Uh, you can visit our website at any time and download them. Uh, thank you for your attendance and uh, have a great day. So thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye.